Hello, so we're here with Vince and he's going to talk to us a little bit about um, who you are and uh, what, what period you're from. Okay, well I'm Corporal Law of the uh, 95th Rifles. Mm -hmm. um, we were uh, from the Experiment Corps of Riflemen set up in 1800 and were in campaign all the way through the Napoleonic War until 1815 when we were taken out of the numbered uh, regiments and made into the Rifle Brigade. Right, okay. And, and can you tell us a bit about your your lovely uniform and, and what, what purposes did it serve and the kit you've got with you? Well, obviously you can see the main difference between the, the usual British Army in their scarlets. Uh, we're in green. Uh, yeah. It's something that the sort of the lights that were armed with rifles were, were, were doing, taken from sort of the, the German Jaeger battalions right. um, that were sort of loyal to uh, King George. And obviously that is one of our other key differences between us and the normal British Army is the rifle, right. rather than the Brown Bess, which was a smoothbore weapon. So this was far more accurate, it took longer to load, but uh, because of our sort of skirmishing capabilities, much more effective and much more accurate over okay. a much longer range. Great, brilliant. So that was kind of a pioneering piece of kit, was it? Uh, yes, well, um, there are some earlier rifles in the British Army, but they never really took, caught on. So it wasn't until this period that, um, that it really did catch on. And from this point forward, were taken up more and more Great. till the time of the First World War when almost everybody had a rifle yeah, rather yeah. than a smoothbore gun. Okay, and what else do you have? What, what's kind of on your belt and what other kit would you have needed? Uh, well, you? as you can see, we've got the sort of the fairly standard um, uh, ammunition pouch, which would have right. held our cartridges for loading, uh, a ball pouch so we could load sort of uh, just powder and ball as well. Um, the sword bayonet, which is longer than the bayonet for the brown bess, but overall length, it would be the same as the brown bess with a uh, with the sword bayonet on, wow. and that was for fighting in squares against cavalry. Okay, and so it, it, would that be used if you'd run out of ammunition? Is that kind of your? Um, it, it's very much a defensive role, such that um, if cavalry are around, you know that instead of being in line, we'd form square, and you would then everybody would attach their swords and the rifles, bayonets for the rest of the redcoats, and sort of stand with them, sort of held out, such that the, the horses wouldn't come on to the uh, the squares. So right. it's purely defensive. So you'd be right in there amongst all the action, it would be pretty... When cavalry arrived then yes we would have to have sort of gone in and joined sort of the line instead of sort of being out and skirmishing because in loose order against cavalry we would have been decimated. Right. And, and what's the horn you've got there? Uh, this is actually a powder magazine which contains more black powder so it's not actually right. a horn, uh, you know, it's, it's a cow horn but yes. it's not a, a musical. It's not a... <laughs> so, no, that just contains a, uh, a spare magazine of powder for, uh, for use. Okay, great. And, and are there any sort of important to the, the frilly things on your shoulders or is that kind of just decorative? I mean the, the, the shoulder frills are fairly standard, what you do have differences is the colours of the facings. Okay. As with the red coats, uh, we have black facings, the other famous rifle unit was the uh, 5th 60th who had red facings instead of black facings. Okay. Uh, but if you look at the red coats they all have, all have different colour facings denoting which regiment they're from. Okay, great. And the hat, I mean it's fantastic. Yes, the, the, the tall Charco. <laughs> is it comfortable? Um, you, you would have thought that if you were sort of skirmishing through trees, it would easily get knocked off. But um, yeah, you know, it, yeah. it was standard equipment of the time because it does give you extra height, extra bearing and um, makes you look more menacing. It, it certainly does. Over you you right are now. much taller. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, well, thank you very much for talking to us. It's really interesting. And um, you're doing very well on this very hot day, I think, uh, pulling that off. So, um, yes, thank you very much. Thank you.